is that it? Is that a linear homogeneous recurrence relation of degree k with constant coefficients? Yes, what's the degree? Two. How do I solve this? Actually, no. What is the solution? A sub n is always going to be what? If it's a linear homogeneous recurrence relation of degree k with constant coefficients, what's the answer? Always. A number to the nth power. It's exponential. The solution is exponential. What's the only thing I do not know? R, right? All of the linear homogeneous recurrence relations of degree k with constant coefficients have an answer, r to the n, right? And they'll have many of those, right, depending on the degree. And then I have to figure out how to put them together. What I have to figure out is what's the r's? How do I get to the r's? You just plug it in. And then this becomes a characteristic equation. So what would this become? So I know this is the solution. I just have to find the r's. How many r's am I going to find? I'll find 2. Why? Because its degree is 2. So what would be the polynomial that I need to solve? r squared minus 2r, that 2 right here, right? And then minus 2, which is that 2 right there, equals 0. How do you know r to the 2 equals r to the 2? Because it's degree 2. OK, that one. Okay. That guy. That's a degree 2. Thank you. So r is equal to, I don't know factors of negative 2 that add to negative 2, so I'm going to use a quadratic formula. So r is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4ac, which is plus 8 all over 2a. And so that is 2 plus or minus the square root of 12. Is that right? If I can do this right in my head, which is 4 square roots of 3 which means 2 square roots of 3, which means the 2's cancel. Do, 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 1. Yay! I like tablets. I can erase really quickly. But it also means when people go back, you have to really watch the video. Like, how in the world did you do that? Well, I erased all my work. So what's my answer? R1 is 1 plus radical 3. R2 is 1 minus radical 3. That means my generic solution is always going to be that number to the nth, that number to the nth, right? I have two solutions. How do I put them together? All right? I go to my answer and say it's always going to be my a sub n is equal to something times the first to the nth power plus something times the second to the nth power. What goes in front there? A polynomial of n, right? But how many terms? What's the multiplicity of each of these roots? One. So if they occur once, how many things do you put in front of it? One. And so I'll just use what two numbers do you want to use? Not numbers, sorry, letters. <laughs> it's like, what letters? Because they're constants. So like C1, C2. So C1, C2. Is everybody okay with that? Now, could I find these two numbers? So I know that a sub n is something times 1 plus radical 3 to the nth plus something times 1 minus radical 3 to the nth. But I know that a sub 0 was 1 and a sub 1 was 3, right? Given that, I have two pieces of information. Can I find those two unknowns? Yes. What does a sub 0 equal 1 mean? When n is 0, I plug in a 1 in the a position, right? So if I plug a 0 in, what is anything to the 0 power? 1. 1. Right, so those both are n's. So this guy says that 1 is equal to c1 plus c2. What does a1 tell me? 3 is equal to what? 
if I plug a 1 in here and a 1 in here, what's going to happen to my radicals? Hmm? We got an issue here. What's my issue? 1 plus radical 3, because that's 12. I have to go back through this problem. Any typos? Negative b, b squared is 4. 4 minus 4ac, that's 8. 4 plus 8 is 12. Square root of 12 is 4 times 3, which is 2. Square roots of 3, plus minus 0. Because this is just going to be C1 plus C2 again, which has no solution. Yep. Where's my typo? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. So C1 times 1 plus radical 3. C2 times, stop trying to do it in my head. <laughs> okay. So we get to C1 plus C2. All right. Let's just do this. C1, let's do C2. C2 is equal to 1 minus C1 from there, right? And so that means that plugging into here, 3 is equal to C1. 1 plus radical 3 plus 1 minus C1 times 1 minus radical 3. I need to stop trying to do it too far. Write down more. So, all right. That... And that would, this here would cancel. And so this and this and that and that would simplify down to what? The C1s cancel and then I would have the square root and another. So I'd have two square roots of three C1s and then plus 1. You okay so far? I think my algebra is working. So 2 plus radical 3, 2 radical 3 C1. So C1 divided by 2 radical 3. This is ugly. C1 and C2 is equal to 1 minus 2 plus radical 3, or 2 radical 3, well, whatever that is. And those two numbers would get plugged back into that, there at the top. There's some simplification, unless I make some really bad algebra stuff that I'm not seeing. Any other big algebra mistakes that I can't do? Quick question. I forgot. If yep. the multiplicity of the constants is higher than one, do you just write like two? Okay. So if, if multiplicity, so for example, we had this. So let's say I had a sub n is equal to whatever. And then we went to our polynomial and we found our r's and I found that r1 was equal to negative 1 r2 is equal to minus 1, r3 was equal to 2, like that. Let's add three solutions. Then that would tell me that a sub n is equal to something times, I only have negative 1, so it's negative 1 to the n, plus something times 2 to the n. So how many times does negative 1 occur? Twice. So what do I put in front of it? I need to put two constants, but it's a polynomial, right, of n. It has to go up as a polynomial of n. How many times does 2 occur? Once. So how many co constants are in front? 1. And so I just write the constant. Okay. So if it occurred 3 times, what would I put in front of it? n squared c1. Right. A c1, c2n, c3n squared. Right. Just how, I don't, what symbols do you use for your constants are up to you. People use things like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, you know, however many you want to write. But you got to find them.
So that'd be a multiplicity example. All right. 